Hello and welcome to the shop. In today's video, we're going to talk about how I square my blanks, specifically how I set my disc sander up and the tools and jigs that I use to get a blank that is perfectly squared to the tube every time. When I first started pin turning, like it, most other people, I immediately purchased barrel trimmers and began using them. What I found after a while is the barrel trimmers sometimes cause damage to the blanks. Don't want to damage my blanks because you've already invested quite a bit of time prepping that blank, drilling it, gluing it up, not to mention the cost, the expense of the blank. When I found this, this disc sander and I found this sanding jig and how simple it was and how non-aggressive it was and how perfectly square I could make my blanks every time, I was completely sold. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope it helps you to make better pins. My belt and disc sander is a Craftsman uh, six by nine. And what that equates to is the six inch is the width of the belt and it is a 48 inch belt if you were to cut it in half and stretch it out. And the nine inch is the diameter of the disc. Today, I'm mainly gonna focus on the disc portion of my belt and disc sander. And I use, on average, 120 grit sandpaper. I do have some 80 grit, and I do have, I believe it's a 220 grit, but the primary grit that I use when I'm working with my blanks is 120 grit. The paper that is on the disc has adhesive on the back, and you'll peel the adhesive off and stick this onto the aluminum disc. Now, before you stick a new pad, you'll need to peel the old one off. And occasionally, you'll have to do a little extra work. It might take a little bit of a solvent to kind of clean that off. And you want to make sure that you get all of the old paper off, because if you don't, you will have um, little lumps behind your paper, which can cause you not to sand perfectly square. I use primarily 120 grit for squaring my blanks. I do have some 80 grit paper, and I also have some 240 grit paper. I find the 80 grit is just far too aggressive and removes too much material too quickly and can get you into trouble. And I find that the 240 just doesn't remove the material fast enough. 120 does a perfect job and gives me a nice square finish on my blanks every time. One of the first things I do before I start squaring my blanks is I make sure that my table is at a perfect 90 degree to my disc. And I just use this little rafter square to do that. I set it on the table and I can look right down the edge of the rafter square and I don't see any light showing through. So I know I've got a nice perfect 90 degree angle between the table and the disc. My sander came with this nice little miter gauge. When you purchase a sander, look for one that has this accessory because this is invaluable to you when you're squaring your blanks. And if you take a look at my miter gauge, you'll notice it's not set at a perfect 90. The reason why is these things are not always perfectly milled, number one, or number two, I could have dropped this at some point and maybe knocked it out of square. I insert it into the slot and it has a T-slot there, so once it's in the slot, I cannot lift it out. That's important because I don't have to worry about when I'm squaring a blank, pulling it out of the slot and getting the blank off kilter. Once the miter gauge is on the table, bring your rafter square back, set it against your miter gauge, and then put it against your disc, and look down the edge of the miter gauge for any gaps. You can loosen the nut here and adjust left and right to eliminate those gaps and make sure your miter gauge is perfectly square to your disc. So now we've got the table perfectly square to the disc, we got the miter gauge perfectly square to the disc, and we are now ready to square our blanks. One additional comment, I showed you my miter gauge and I mentioned that it could have just not been milled properly or I potentially could have dropped it. Another place where the miter gauge can be caused to not be square with the disc is your table. If your table is racked one way or the other, that could cause you to have to make an adjustment at your gauge. Do not trust the measurements on the gauge. Always set it with a proper tool. This is my sanding jig. I absolutely love this jig. I got it from Tim Geist, and Tim makes these and sells them at the Classic Nib and Turner's Warehouse. So if you want one, uh, they're relatively inexpensive, and they are far superior to barrel trimmers. 
I used to use barrel trimmers. And if you've used a barrel trimmer, you know that if you have a punky wood or if you have a wood that is soft, a barrel trimmer can sometimes pull pieces out of the end grain of that blank. Barrel trimmers also can chip or damage acrylic blanks. Not only that, but if you are barrel trimming a seven millimeter pin and you want to barrel trim an eight millimeter pin, you've got to buy a seven millimeter and an eight millimeter shaft for that barrel trimmer. So you've got to buy a new shaft for every dimension pin you have. It must match the barrel dimension. So if it's a 2764, you need a 2764 shaft. With this, it's nice. You can go to your local hardware store and you can buy a set of punches. Every pin turner should have a set of these because there's gonna come a time where you're gonna to need to take a pin apart. These are invaluable. Not only are they invaluable for taking a pin apart, but they work perfect with this sanding jig. You basically pick the punch that fits perfectly inside of your blank. You're going to slide it into the V groove on the top of the jig and you're gonna tighten the thumb screw. Now I'm just gonna loose, loosely tighten it for the moment because once I get the miter gauge back onto my table and I attach this to my miter gauge, then I'll adjust it for the perfect distance from the disc. I brought my miter gauge back over to the table of my disc sander. Now we know that this miter gauge is square to the disc and we know that this table is square to the disc. So we're ready now to attach our jig to the miter gauge. With my jig sitting against my miter gauge, I'll bring a blank over and I'll lay it against the disc and I'll make sure I have about a quarter of an inch distance between the end of my jig and the end of my blank. Using a two inch C clamp, I'll go ahead and clamp the jig to my miter gauge. Now we want to work with our punch. I'll bring the punch out and I'll put it about a quarter of an inch away from the disc. This punch is made from steel, so it's not gonna flex. It's gonna hold the blank perfectly. Now that we have the jig all set up, we are ready to go ahead and begin squaring our blanks. But before we do, there's one more thing we wanna take care of. Take a look at our sandpaper. I've been squaring an awful lot of blanks lately, and there's a lot of acrylic dust and wood dust on this sandpaper. If you want to extend the life of your sandpaper, you can buy these rubber erasers at your local hardware store. And this one you can tell by how worn down it is. I've had it for many years and I've used it for many years. But let me show you how it works. With that quick little motion, we have done two things. Number one, we have extended the life of our sandpaper. And number two, we have made the sandpaper more efficient for the process we're about to perform. I brought my miter gauge with the jig attached to it back over to the table. We're gonna go ahead and put it into the T-slot. We'll take our blank, we'll slide it onto the punch, and we are ready to begin squaring our blank. Now, it's gonna get really noisy, so I'm not gonna be able to explain while I'm squaring, so I'm gonna go ahead and explain this to you prior to turning on the disc sander. As we move the miter gauge back and forth and never go past center, if you go past center, it's gonna be throwing everything up in the air. All the dust and the debris is gonna go up in the air. You wanna to sand to about center and back off. As you're sanding, you're gonna notice I'm gonna be rotating the blank. And what that does is that eliminates the possibility of any basically striation marks. It's going to keep the blank nice and square and it's going to give me a nice smooth surface that will mate against my pin components. With the blank squared, I'm gonna go ahead and run a bottle brush through the tube to clean the inside of the tube out. Just kind of wipe the outside off with my fingers so you can see it. 
And if you take a look at that, see that brass tube? We are perfectly squared to the end of our blank. This blank's ready to go to the lathe. All that's left is a little cleanup. Once again, we'll use our rubber eraser to clean the disc, and we can use our vacuum to suck any loose dust up off of the table. I would really like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful, and I hope you're able to take away some information from this video that you can use in your shop to enhance your pin making. I want to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.